This is Beersheba, a city of over 200,000 people. Universities, high-tech companies, shopping malls, trees. It's in the Negev Desert, where summer temperatures hit 120 degrees Fahrenheit, annual rainfall is under 8 inches, and flash floods can drop a year's worth of rain in 30 minutes. 2,000 years ago, the Nabataeans and Byzantines built stone dwellings here that still stand, but they didn't build 30-story towers, they didn't have air conditioning running 24-7, they didn't need to keep concrete from cracking in 120-degree heat while pouring a foundation. And if you think this doesn't affect me, think again. 40% of Earth's land surface is desert or dry land. Phoenix, Las Vegas, Dubai, Riyadh, Cairo, cities that shouldn't exist are booming. By 2100, over 2.3 billion people will live in deserts, and every single one of those cities faces the same brutal question. How do you build when nature is actively trying to destroy everything you create? Israel has spent 75 years answering that question. Today, we're diving into the engineering, the material science, and the construction techniques that let you build modern cities in one of the harshest environments on Earth. Because what Israel figured out in the Negev, the rest of the world is about to need desperately. Building in the Negev isn't just hot weather construction. It's fighting three distinct enemies simultaneously. The Negev isn't just hot. It's volatile. Summer daytime temperatures hit 45 to 50 degrees Celsius, 113 to 122 degrees Fahrenheit. But at night, they can drop to 15 to 20 degrees Celsius, 59 to 68 degrees Fahrenheit. That's a 30 degrees Celsius swing in 12 hours. When concrete heats up, it expands. When it cools, it contracts. A 100-meter concrete beam can grow or shrink by 3 to 4 centimeters with temperature changes. Do that every single day for decades, and materials fatigue. Cracks form. Structures weaken. But here's the insane part. The desert isn't just dry. Sometimes it's violently wet. The Negev gets 100 to 200 millimeters of rain per year on average, but it doesn't fall evenly. It comes in flash floods. In January 2020, a single storm dropped 75 millimeters of rain in Beersheba in 90 minutes. That's half the annual rainfall in one morning. Dry wadis, desert valleys, turned into torrents moving at 15 kilometers per hour. Foundations got undermined, roads washed away, buildings that weren't designed for water flooded. So you're designing for extreme drought and catastrophic flooding simultaneously. The third jiller is sunlight. Direct solar radiation in the Negev can heat exposed surfaces to 65 to 70 degrees Celsius. A metal roof becomes a frying pan. Dark asphalt? You can cook an egg on it. Without proper building design, you're fighting a losing battle against thermodynamics. Air conditioning costs in poorly designed desert buildings can be three to four times higher than in temperate climates. In Israel, cooling accounts for up to 70% of residential electricity use in summer. Before we talk about modern techniques, let's talk about what worked for 2,000 years. The Nabataeans and Byzantines who lived in the Negev built structures that are still standing. How? The answer is thermal mass. They built with thick stone walls, 60 to 80 centimeters thick. Stone has high thermal inertia. It absorbs heat slowly during the day and releases it slowly at night. The inside temperature stays relatively stable. Here's the science. A 60 centimeter thick stone wall exposed to 45 degrees Celsius daytime heat doesn't immediately transmit that heat indoors. It takes 8 to 12 hours for heat to conduct through. By the time the interior wall surface warms up, it's evening and the exterior is cooling down. The Ancient Desert Architecture Toolkit Thick walls 60 to 80 centimeters stone or adobe Small, high windows minimize solar gain Domed or vaulted roofs No flat surfaces to absorb heat Courtyards Create shade and natural ventilation Light colors Reflect solar radiation. 
These buildings worked without electricity, without HVAC. The architecture was the climate control. So if traditional methods worked, why did Israel abandon them? One word, speed. In the 1950s to 60s, Israel absorbed over a million immigrants. They needed housing fast. Traditional stone construction is labor-intensive. Concrete is fast, cheap, and scalable. You can pour an entire building frame in months. So they built millions of square meters of concrete housing. But they made a critical mistake. They used lightweight concrete with no thermal mass. Thin walls, flat roofs, large windows. The buildings became ovens in summer, freezers in winter. Modern Israeli desert construction combines ancient wisdom with 21st century material science. The key innovation? Engineered thermal mass using alternative materials. Researchers at Ben-Gurion University developed a revolutionary building material using industrial waste. Fly ash from oil shale combustion mixed with local Negev sand and lime. Fly ash concrete properties. Thermal conductivity, 40% lower than standard concrete. Thermal mass, high, stores heat like stone. Compressive strength, meets structural building codes. Cost, 30% cheaper than imported materials. Carbon footprint, 60% lower, utilizes waste product. This material gives you the thermal mass benefits of ancient stone construction, but with the speed and scalability of modern concrete. And you're recycling waste that would otherwise go to landfills. But thermal mass alone isn't enough. You need a way to purge the stored heat at night. Israeli engineers developed automated night ventilation systems. How it works? Day, windows or vents closed. Thermal mass absorbs heat. Indoor temp stays 5 to 8 degrees Celsius cooler than outside. Night, when outdoor temp drops below indoor, motorized vents open automatically. Cool night air flows through building, absorbing heat from walls and floors. Morning, vents close. Cycle repeats. Buildings designed with this system reduce cooling energy consumption by 40 to 60 percent compared to fully air-conditioned buildings. In a Sede Bocaire residential project monitored from 2006 to 2007, summer cooling loads dropped from 45 kilowatt hours per meter squared to 18 kilowatt hours per meter squared. But here's where it gets really interesting. It's not just about individual buildings, it's about urban geometry. Researchers at Ben-Gurion University used thermal simulation software to test how street design affects building cooling loads in desert cities. They modeled different street canyon configurations, the ratio of building height to street width, HW ratio. The results. H over W equals 0.33, wide streets and low buildings. Buildings exposed to sun all day leads to high cooling loads. H over W equals 1.0, narrow streets and tall buildings. Buildings shade each other leads to 30% cooling reduction. H over W equals 2.0, very narrow streets and very tall buildings leads to maximum shade, leads to 45% cooling reduction. This is why new developments in Beersheva are using narrow north-south oriented streets with taller buildings. The buildings shade each other, street surfaces stay cooler, pedestrians get shade. It's ancient Middle Eastern urban planning validated by modern simulation. Okay, theory is great, but how do you actually pour concrete when the ambient temperature is 45 degrees Celsius? Concrete cures through a chemical reaction, hydration, that generates heat. In hot weather, the reaction accelerates, water evaporates too fast, the concrete can crack before it even sets. You get plastic shrinkage cracks within hours. 
Israeli hot weather concrete protocols. Pour before 7 a.m. Start at dawn when temps are 20 to 25 degrees Celsius. Chilled water. Use ice or refrigerated water in mix, 4 to 10 degrees Celsius. Sunshades. Erect temporary shading over pore areas. Continuous curing. Spray water mist for seven days minimum. Admixtures. Retarding agents slow curing to reduce heat generation. On major projects, concrete trucks arrive at 4.30 a.m. Entire pours are completed by 10 a.m. before the brutal heat hits. It's logistically insane, but it works. Remember those flash floods? They create a foundation nightmare. In wadis, dry riverbeds, sudden torrents can undermine shallow foundations in minutes. Israeli Desert Foundation Techniques Deep Piles Concrete piles driven 15 to 25 meters to bedrock. Elevated structures. Ground floors raised 1 to 2 meters above grade. Drainage channels. Engineered flood channels route water around buildings. Gabion walls. Rock-filled wire cages protect foundations from erosion. In Halutza, a community one kilometer from Gaza, built on former sand dunes, every building sits on piles driven 20 meters deep. The floods come, the water flows around the structures, the buildings stay put. And then there's dust. The Negev experiences sandstorms with visibility under 50 meters. Fine desert sand infiltrates everything. Construction equipment fails faster in deserts. Bearings seize from sand. Electrical systems short out in days instead of months. Israeli construction adaptations. Sealed building envelopes. Gaskets, weather stripping on all openings. Positive pressure systems. Keep interior pressure slightly higher to prevent infiltration. Filter pre-rooms. Airlocks at building entrances. Equipment shelters. And close all mechanical systems. All of this expertise has turned the Negev into what Israel calls desert tech, the desert technology ecosystem. Beersheva is becoming a global hub for arid climate solutions. The desert tech ecosystem. Ben Gurion University, Center for Desert Architecture, dozens of research programs. Innovation District, connecting academia, startups, advanced industry. 2.3 billion people projected to live in deserts by 2100, according to the UN. 40% of Earth is desert or dry land. Israel is the only country reversing desertification through technology. What Israel learned in the Negev is being exported worldwide. Saudi Arabia is building Neom using Israeli desert construction consultants. India is adopting thermal mass techniques for hot arid regions. Arizona is studying Beersheva's urban planning. Because here's the brutal reality. Deserts are expanding. The Sahara has grown 10% since 1920. Southern Europe is experiencing desertification. The American Southwest is in a mega drought. By 2050, cities that were warm will be desert and they'll need these construction techniques to survive. So what did Israel figure out that lets you build modern cities in 120 degree heat? It's not one technique, it's a systems approach, the desert construction philosophy. Work with thermodynamics, not against it, thermal mass, passive cooling. Build for extremes, flash floods, temperature swings, not averages. Use local materials, fly ash, desert sand, reduces cost and carbon. Plan at the urban scale, street canyons, building orientation. Respect ancient wisdom, Nabataean techniques still work. Every morning at 4.30 a.m. in the Negev, construction crews start pouring concrete before the sun rises. They're not just building buildings, they're proving that human civilization can thrive anywhere if we're smart enough to adapt. The planet is getting hotter. Deserts are expanding. By the end of this century, billions of people will call deserts home. And the techniques we're using to keep them alive? Israel is writing the manual right now in the Negev.
Would you live in a city built in the desert using these techniques? Or is air conditioning the only solution? Let me know in the comments. I'm genuinely curious if people trust passive cooling. Until then, stay curious, stay ambitious, and remember, the impossible is just the thing we haven't engineered yet. See you next time. Thanks for watching. Grand Structure.